Hello everyone, Pelletev here. Welcome back to Path of Exile. I know in the last video I was putting an S after Exile, and it was really tilting me when I was listening to it. So to anyone else that that bothered, I I sincerely <laughs> apologize. We're back in the game. As you can see, this is my spin to win character that we were talking about yesterday. And unfortunately, um, I think it's time to put him down. I think it's time to put him to rest. This was the first character that I really jumped into the game and wanted to try. Really wanted to start biting into what this game had to offer. And I think he served his purpose very well. He got up to level 55 or so, and unfortunately doesn't do enough damage or have enough survivability to really make it further. Now, I think this was a combination between uh, several talents that I could have selected a lot better. And also from a lack of understanding of gear and gym connections. But this time around, I am going to use a guide for my next character. And I thought this would be a good way to approach the game. Um, go in head first, try to figure it out on one character when that fails. And I knew it would. I didn't, I didn't really think he was going to be able to clear a ton of in-game content. After I get to that point, I'm going to look at something that's well written from someone who understands the game and then reapproach the game with a new character and a new outlook an, a new future ahead of me and then when i get tired of the guide character i'll go back in and try to theory craft another character of my own and just keep this cycle going and eventually i'll be pretty knowledgeable at least that is the plan what i am playing now is a spark scion and oh my goodness it is so much fun um so much better than my last character. It's actually incredible how much fun I'm having with this. Um, a Spark Scion essentially sends out a million projectiles onto the screen. Com completely devastate an area if an enemy happens to walk into it. And with my specific setup, I am having uh, a pretty good pretty good chance of actually surviving through things as well. Now again, this is a guide I got off of the internet. It is from a creator known as Ziggy D, a very prominent YouTuber in the Path of Exile community. So if you would like to check out his video on this, I will put it in the video description, but I thought it wouldn't hurt to report on my findings with the build as well. And just to really stress how much fun I'm actually having with it. And I'm not even close to being done. I'm about halfway through. This character is currently in act two. Uh, on cruel difficulty, so the middle difficulty, and it just completely melts things. It's so much fun. So much fun. Even extra life enemies don't really seem to know what to do. Now, the basis of how this build works is actually pretty simple. You want Spark to go through and damage as many things as humanly possible, and you set up your gems and your gear to kind of help make that happen. In our chest piece, this is where I'm keeping Spark. It's augmented with the Pierce support, which adds a 50% chance of your projectiles going through a target. So uh, let's say we had an enemy over here in this corner. I could kind of fill up this whole area with these sparks and the sparks have a chance of traveling through anyone who happens to be here, bouncing off of the wall and then coming back to deal more damage. If you're in a smaller area, of course, the chances of this happening are significantly better. Also, we have augmented it with faster projectiles, which means the speed of the spark has been increased by 57% as of right now. And this also increases our projectile damage. And we're also using Spell Echo instead of like uh, multiple projectiles, because what Spell Echo does is allow us to get more projectiles out from just one cast, from just one application of the spell. So this is me clicking one time. That's quite a bit of sparks. And if we shoot it towards the wall, it looks even more impressive. Essentially, we can completely fill up the screen with these things. And it's been a lot of fun making this build and kind of watching it progress. I've, I've always mentioned that progression is my favorite part of these kind of games. And uh, it really has scaled up absolutely beautifully. My spin to win character could not have killed this room anywhere near as fast as what I just did. And honestly, it makes me really think about like, why would I bother with a melee AOE when I can AOE like this from ranged, from complete safety and take out targets with that ease? Why would I even bother going with Cyclone again? It's, it's really been eye-opening. It's been absolutely eye-opening. Um, other ways that this build kind of uh, helps increase our damage output is with, 
let's see. The Warlord's Mark curses all targets in the area, making them more vulnerable to stuns. Uh, hitting the cursed target will leech life and mana. So it allows us to cast more spells without having to use our potions when we apply the Warlord's Mark. Now, you may have noticed that... Um, well, we don't cast that. Similar to the last build when we were using the Blasphemy Aura, we are using the Curse on Hit. But this, again, is not applied to Spark. Instead, it is applied to the Herald of Thunder ability, which we activate. It's going to reserve a little bit of our mana over here on the right. What the Herald of Thunder does is when we spark a target, when they become... What is the official terminology? Yeah, if you kill Shock Timmy, that's what it was. C Team, I'm still learning, but I got it. I'm paying attention. So when we kill an enemy that we have shocked with the spark, what it does is it triggers the Herald of Thunder. And this is the lightning you see coming down from the sky right now. Anything that this lightning hits will become cursed. And then when we deal damage to them, we're going to heal and return our mana. And as you can see, it's very easy to deal damage <laughs> to targets that are in a room like that. Just super easy. Uh, we also gain endurance charges from this, which you can see up at the top right from hitting these cursed targets. And these endurance charges reduce the physical damage that we take, which is really, really good for our survivability in general. But this also comes into play with some different augmentations. Um, this comes into play with our on hit setup. So we have a mortal call, which is going to get rid of all of our endurance charges and make the caster invulnerable to physical damage for a short time. This has saved me on bosses that jump in right on top of me and just deal a lot of damage. It has been an absolute godsend to have this. Even if it's only a second of immunity, even if it's only taking one endurance charge, that's still stopping me from just completely getting obliterated. And it's really aided quite well to, to my survivability. Uh, we are also using increased duration support. I thought it would help the Immortal Call last a little bit longer. I'm assuming it does. Um, I can't remember if this was suggested in the guide or not. Uh, and then Summon Stone Golem. This is our little buddy that we have roaming around us sometimes. I don't know where he is right now. Do I not have enough to summon him? Oh, I can't use it. Uh, so when we take damage, he can come out and he could say hi. Um, and then cast when damage taken is the red support gem. And that is what is allowing us to passively get that immunity and use up all of our charges. It works out really, really nice. Uh, for mobility, I am using the flat, uh, flame dash, which allows us to just move a very short line and it kind of ignites the ground on uh, behind us on fire. So if people walk into it, they will take a little bit of damage. Um, not super important, I would say. It's, it allows me to reposition a little bit, but eventually I am going to be swapping over to a very special bow once I manage to farm that because I am using all self-found gear. And that bow is going to allow me to use blink shot and kind of jump over terrain and things like that. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, I think that is about it for the setup. We are using arcane um, arctic armor, excuse me, which is leaving this trail of ice behind us. Not only is it good for slowing enemies that might be chasing you, but it's also really, really good if you're playing in co-op and you like to run ahead of your teammates like I do because it gives them a very convenient path to follow to get back to you. I made you a heart. Will you like the video now? God damn, what more do I have to do? Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at the passive skills, we started down here, made our way to these duration increases in the scion tree because these duration increases make it so our spark stays out on the field longer. And then to the left through the life nodes, we got shaper, more duration increases here with potency of will up to the top to pick up elemental overload and the mental rapidity, uh, rapidity, rapidity, we got that. Uh, then made our way down to retribution, elementalist and light of divinity. Uh, I am making my way down to the right now, uh, specifically to pick up the fitness or finesse, heart of oak and ballistic mastery. Ballistic mastery, pretty good because all of these sparks are counting as projectiles. Um, I think the build is going to progress further over towards the Duelist Tree, which I'm very familiar with from the last character. And um, I'm really, really optimistic about how this one's going to, to pan out. I'm going to make my way to the boss of this area and you can just see how good it is at completely demolishing health reserves.
You know, while I'm making my way over there, I will say what inspired me to actually do a setup like this was from my old friend Cromar. I don't remember if you guys remember him from the glory days of TGN, but he was crazy about Path of Exile. And I remember a build that he did for Templar where he would put down a spell totem and then that totem would shoot sparks out in every direction. And I thought it was so cool. And I, I just loved watching that. And coming back into the game and like trying really hard to make a, a spark build work has really made me miss my good old friend. So, Cromar, I doubt you're watching, but th this is for you, man. This is for you. Um, so that was the boss. Really easy. No drama at all. We killed it before it like even knew what hit it. And the cool thing is, is that this build is only going to keep getting better uh, because we're going to unlock more intricacies that uh, really kind of, I don't want to say exploit the game mechanics, but definitely take advantage of how some damage scales. This is by no means a new build or anything like that. Again, if you guys want to look at the guide, it will be in the video description. All credit goes to Ziggy D for theory crafting this. Uh, I do have a new point to spend it. I think we're going to put it right here. Yeah. Uh, I do have clarity in here somewhere. It's on one of these. Um, but clarity, I'm actually not using it because it reduces my mana so much from the reserved amount. So while it does give me unlimited mana and I don't have to worry about casting stuff ever, it does kind of slow down how fast I can attack because um, there's just a little bit of downtime before my mana pops back up. Uh, so I'm not currently using clarity. And it is worth mentioning that my flame dash is augmented with a faster casting support gem. Uh, while I was leveling, Spark was pretty bad, like in the early in the early levels, really, really bad in the early levels. So what I was doing was actually running around with Contagion and Essence Drain, and that works out really, really cool for starting with this setup because in the talent tree I mentioned, the first thing you're going to be getting is this ex exceptional performance, which increases the skill durations, and then immediately after that, you're going for port potency of will, which increases skill durations, which means that it also makes your damage over time effects stay out longer on enemies. So I'll kind of show you a little bit of what that looks like since we just finished up here. So again, we're going to be dropping Contagion first and then Essence Drain after. Uh, let's see if we can get a big group of enemies here. Yeah, this should do just fine. And what it does is essentially doubles apply, it doubles an application of damage over time. And then that damage over time is going to chain to everything around it. So especially on low health enemies, this is a great way of clearing out the screen pretty effectively as well. So while I was leveling up and my spark didn't have very many support gems in it, and it was uh, really not that impactful, I was using these two abilities to kind of fill out that damage. I would just apply the dots and then uh, spark into them in between. And it was a great way of progressing through content. So I would highly recommend that if you're having any trouble leveling. And, and again, you are increasing the duration in your talent tree already. So, you know, you might as well. Now that I've kind of grown up a little bit, we are level 48 now. Um, I find it just easy enough to cast Spark and kill most things. And remember, Spark is going to be triggering the Herald of Thunder, which is pretty important to stay alive as well. So uh, any time spent casting that is probably going to be better than applying the other applications of dots. But I just wanted to bring that up. I cannot stress how much fun I've been having with this build, and I want to show you guys my favorite part of the game, but I'm going to do it in another video, which is the Labyrinth. I've had so much fun in the Labyrinth. It's actually how you unlock your Ascendancy uh, classes. Uh, so I mentioned that your starting class doesn't really matter. Well, I lied, uh, because you do have specific things that you can unlock through Ascendancy. Uh, and we could talk about that a little bit more in the next video. But for those of you that are curious, I am working my way over towards Dead Eye as of right now. So thank you all for watching today's video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. You're going to be seeing a lot more of this character as I progress through the game. It is really, really, really good. A oh, Spirit Earthquake. Uh, if you guys did enjoy the Path of Exile content, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. And um, yeah, I cannot believe how much fun I'm having with this game. It's given me the same sensation that Dark Souls did back in the day, and that is a scary thought, boys. That's a real scary thought.